commander of Aldrinar's grave, if he can even still consider himself a commander when his garrison lies in ruin and his troop has been decimated, sits down at a makeshift desk he is constructed by propping the charred remains of a door up on two stacks of stones. He dips a quill in a bottle of ink, taking a second to smile, realizing how fortunate he is to have not only surviving ink, but usable parchment in a quill as well. He begins to write. Captain Andalin, I write to you now not for social reasons, but out of direst need. Aldrinard's grave was set upon by bandits from Scrapwall a few days ago. Our horses were slain, our supplies burned, and two-thirds of our people have been put to the knife. The fort has been retaken. We had some very capable assistance from a band of adventurers. But I'm afraid in our weakened state we are unable to keep our gates open to pilgrims in need. I humbly beg of you to send a small contingent of soldiers and supplies, whatever you can spare, that we may open our gates once more. An ill wind blows across the plains here. I fear our services will be needed sooner rather than later. In the Dawnflower's name, that is Cracklos, Commander. Algernon's grave. This is Pot Against the Machine. Pot Against the Machine. Welcome back to Pod Against the Machine, the only podcast with Clarence. That's it. That's the superlative. <laughs> I'm your host, and here's everybody. Hello, Clarence. Yeah, hello. 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 Well, uh, last time on the show, our heroes finally made it into Scrapwall. They get to meet some Steelhawks, what remains of the Steelhawks, who appear to be having a bit of a rough go of things made a deal with Sevroth, their leader, to go see Bird Food, who is technically their leader, but he's also an ex-smiler who's basically just puppeteering the gang. After some cajoling, you managed to secure the services of one Clarence, the Steelhawk shirtless wonder, who is totally competent and ready to do battle to save the very capable four, and decided to do the Wookiee maneuver, bring the entire very capable four into Hawk Palace as prisoners of Clarence, and bring them to the door of Bird Food himself, which is where we find ourselves now. So just to set the scene a little bit, you're in a 10 foot wide hallway, just outside the door to the office where theoretically bird food is hanging out. How do you want to arrange yourselves for this encounter before we do anything else? I can confidently say after several months of having played Pathfinder and with this team, we should have Brixby in the front and Asher should be behind everyone else. <laughs> this is the way things have been done. I, you know, it's funny. I was going to suggest that Asher should be in the front just to kind of mix things up a bit. And also because he's been doing the bluffing so far. So that's, that is a thought. Open to suggestions as to how we want to arrange ourselves in the final encounter of our lives as characters, not as players. I currently like this arrangement. Um, and I, I would like to say that this is happening, you know, because we buffed ourselves already. So I feel like this is probably happening simultaneously, right? But I like the arrangement that we have with Asher in the front so there's no one blocking a shot. Um, Kira immediately behind him. Um, to the north of those two are Clarence in the front. Um, and how many levels of Cavalier does he have, Sam? Uh, that would be zero levels mm. of Cavalier. Uh, he's a Yojimbo sam- samurai for sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and to remind our listeners, Asher's hands are bound with ion tape behind his back. He is holding a zip stick in his hands, ready to activate it. Were, were any of the rest of you pretending to be bound? I had to break mine for the somatic components of at least one of those spells, I imagine. I got to double check, but I'm pretty sure at least one of them involves some hand waving. 
Yes, shield does. So, what would be the uh, GM's ruling on Vargas casting long arm, and then just you wrapping the <laughs> long arm around the other one to look like he's tied up with like metal? I mean, just imagining stretching the right arm out and just like wrapping around the other one so it looks like he's just got a bunch of metal like holding his hands together behind his back. Got those new heavy duty handcuffs. I would say that um, you are in a place where there's a lot of people with things made of garbage on them, so you got that going for you, but it's it'll probably be a bluff check. I imagine there's going to be a whole bluffing situation uh, about to go on. Yeah. Well, it lasts for four minutes, so he will do that like last thing before we open the door so that it's there for as long as possible. <laughs> oh, sweet. Sweet Jero. I hope Vargas lives at least four minutes. And I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like we're still going bluff heavy. We're going to walk in and say we're here to be captured. We've already been captured. Uh, I believe we were supposed to make Wookiee noises per Jeff's original plan. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> that's good. Let's call it an episode. Um, cool. I'm going to say I don't remember if I said this last week, so I'm going to say it now, and you know, take whatever slander uh, that comes through the Discord. I'm also going to cast shield, which means I'm assuming Kira's hands aren't bound. I don't think they were four. Um, and that's been stated. So, yeah. I mean, technically. We're the only five in this hallway right now, right? Until we open this door. Well, uh, there was... So we could cast spells and then rebind hands if we had to. Yeah. I was thinking that for Bricks, he was just going to put his hands behind his back. But once we're into the office, it, it's... I mean, we're either going to win them over diplomatically or we're going to beat them into submission, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming, like, if we had him bound with the tape... Like, when we unbound them ourselves, they're still going to be, like, torn tape on your wrists. If you put them back together, it's going to kind of look like it's on. Plus, look at Brixby. They couldn't expect any fetters to hold him back. Those rippling, ratty muscles. <laughs> He's bulging with what could be muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think with, I mean, Brix cast shield mage armor, placed himself behind the um, Clarence with all of his cavalier levels, as we discussed. Um so, oh, and that had Vargas in the back when we were discussing party order for the folks at home. Oh, yep, I forgot to say that. I was behind Kira, so I am third in line on the Asher side of the hallway. Yeah, so he will last thing before you open the door, and I'm assuming Kira probably does hers last minute as well, because yours is also one that lasts minutes, not hours. Mm -hmm. There was some discussion before about throwing open the door and throwing a grenade. We're off that plan. I've never been off that plan. I have been a strong proponent of this plan from the get-go because, I don't know. I mean, grenade diplomacy is really popular in Shitterhome. We have been led astray by so many hallways with more doors that I won't believe I'm in the end chamber until I see bird food. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so anticlimactic to seal team six a, like, ten-foot connecting hallway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh, an empty foyer is just covered in dust now. Sorry about that. That's why we're prisoners. Loose cannons and all that. <laughs> I'm imagining more like an airlock. Like, it's only, like, two feet and then another door. So you throw it and it just bounces back to oh, us. No. <laughs> specifically installed that airlock for grenade purposes. Plus, it's going to be better for us if we get out of this hallway anyway. Because I think we're going to fight better in a room. Um, just in general. So I think that probably sneaking in, as much as the throwing in the grenade idea would be fun. We don't even know what's on the other side, and we're totally not all chaotic neutral. What um, You described scrap wall itself as walls just made of junk, just kind of wedged on top of itself. Or is this building the same? Like, is, is are these walls made of proper masonry, or is this a junk building? Ah, uh, this is a ramshackle structure constructed from wood, bits of scrap metal, and other items of refuse scavenged from the surrounding terrain. Um, it looks reasonably solid. 
like stuff's been riveted together and the the walls are properly framed but it's a total mishmash of building materials cool cool that's good to know how uh how high have the walls been asking for a friend clarence <laughs> <laughs> well you're at the top of a, a stairway and the where you are the ceiling's probably just like eight feet high and then down at the bottom of the stairway it's like 18 feet high because it's a squared off room but uh, most of what you've been in has basically been courtyard type things semi open to the sky probably won't come up just just wondering sure sure makes sense just stalling the painful and inevitable demise (laughs) i'm super optimistic about this guys i haven't been like giving myself ulcers or anything that would be just weird (laughs) so we just push clarence through just Kick him right through the door. Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> Nudge him through there, yeah. So who's opening the door? Is he making Clarence do it? I'm bound. Sorry. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> Long arm could just reach through <laughs> us. <laughs> okay. I'll open the door, but I don't like it. Clarence opens the door, revealing beyond the throne room is a sort of medium-sized room. Looks like maybe 30 feet wide and 20 feet the other dimension and at the center of the room is a large throne uh, made of scrap metal also mostly but it looks like it's um, higher quality like uh, or (laughs) at least it's been painted to look gold or bronze there's almost no way to identify like the different parts that went into this Uh, is resting on top of a pelt of some huge bovine animal it's difficult to say what it was in life but it was big and it's it's dead now there is a smiler in the room easily identified by the face with no lips and the perpetual smile framed by gory skin and barely healed wounds and there is sitting on the throne another smiler in leather armor wearing thick leather gloves his hair cropped in close to his head in braids with three hawks perched on the chair behind him. I'm going to paste a picture of this guy in the Discord because it's a nice looking fella. The hawks so. look nice. Oh, wow. And as the door opens, he's going to sort of spring up to his feet and say, What is the meaning of this? Uh, I think we're all waiting for Clarence to explain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Please talk amongst yourself. <laughs> Clarence goes, um, but, uh, but they're prisoners that were, I brought prisoners for you, bird food, because you're the leader of the Steelhawks. And uh, bird food rolls his eyes and he's like, prisoners. All right, bring them in. And uh, Clarence will walk into the room and sort of step out of the way to usher the four of you in. I will step to the north behind Clarence. Yasoki, you get out of that corner there. Come around in front. <clears throat> right, yeah, I, uh... <clears throat> Bricks doesn't say anything else. Now, uh, I can't help but notice these prisoners still have weapons. Um, yeah, but but they're all, uh, they're tied up, so it's, it's, it's fine. And we're dumb. Yeah. It's been canonically stated that we're dumb. Whatever that means, big words and stuff. Clearly you are dumb, but, uh, and he gestures over to the other smiler. Take their weapons from them. And, um, the other smiler's gonna come forward and head straight for Kira, who is the one who has the giant weapons. And if you don't do anything to stop him, he is gonna take Lucy and Ethel. Um, hmm. Kira <laughs> gives Asher like a, uh... Sounds like go time. I mean, we've tried diplomacy. We've exhausted all diplomatic options. <laughs> Can we just say, as a group, that we've, we've extended an olive branch and it was refused? Oh, Asher was just going to say, as as the smiler approached, Surely someone as powerful as you has nothing to fear from us. Very dumb for what use is a weapon in our hands against 
someone as strong as you. And uh, whether you want me to call that diplomacy or bluff. <laughs> uh, probably a bluff. Uh, yeah, 19 total. Um, Bird Food's going to uh, look at Asher and he's going to say, uh, Well, as dumb as you are, I cannot allow you to keep your weapons. Search that one first. And the Smiler turns and will go for Asher's gun belts instead. Can I attack him? I would, I would really just, I would like to. I was going to go for an Intimidate, but... Can we surprise <laughs> round them by surprising them with our prowess? I would need a personal friend. You can totally surprise round. Kira's concerned for her friend. But nobody has weapons, oh, yeah. John. Yeah. That's fine. I am a weapon. I mean, one of us has a weapon. Yeah, like all <laughs> attached to your body. Can I just punch someone? That'd be fun. You can? Oh, I love punching. Um, so why don't we roll for initiative before any of that? Then you guys can have a surprise round. Um, so what is Brixby's in it? I rolled a 12 for a 15. All right. And what is your modifier? It is a plus three. All right, and how about uh, Vargas? Vargas rolled an eight for a ten. Nice, nice, nice. And Kira? Uh, six for eleven. And how about Asher? Asher rolled a twelve for a sixteen. And it looks like Asher is first in the surprise round. Asher will activate the zip stick he is clutching as his action which will then render his ion tape bonds inert. Okay, and Brixby. Brixby would like to dig a paw into his spell component pouch, his hands not bound, grab a flaky piece of mineral, crushing the mica in his hands. He lifts his paw up to his mouth and blows. So I'm effectively casting glitter dust over bird food. So bird food, this hawk, this hawk, uh, unfortunately, this Smiler is right outside of it. There's no way I can position it, I think, and not get Clarence or one of us. So uh, Blue and Green Hawk and the Smiler to all roll a will save as a explosion of gold glitter bursts. All right, let's do Bird Food's will save first. Flat-footed will save. Uh, that's a 16. Oh, meets beats, unfortunately. And yes. Red Hawk is going to... That's a 19. That's a willful little hawk. Oh, luckily, Red Hawk wasn't even in there. It's just oh. blue and green. So you can... I suppose you could roll that sure. over to blue. Although I really yeah. think blue is its own hawk, you know, that's separate from red. Has its own a identity. Compelling scene. argument, but I, I think we're gonna we're gonna call that one blue. And now green hawk is a uh, thirteen. Well, that hawk is blind as heck, and every round they can roll to see if they aren't. Didn't really go exactly the way I wanted, but at least I blinded a bird. That's the most anyone can ask for in this game. So that's the end of my turn. It's a bird demic. So we are on to Kira's surprise round. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kira's just going to punch that guy. It's a surprise. I can only do, let's see, one standard or one move, right? So I'm going to use yeah. that one to punch him in the face. I think narratively, um, this person starts to come for her and she's like, oh, I, 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 are we still bluffing? Um, Asher speaks up and the guy turns toward Asher and she's like, well, no, that's not what we talked about. Uh, and we'll punch him in the face. So that's going to be... I'm going to roll a regular d20 and then add my strength mod. Does that sound right? And your BAB. Yeah, it's like a regular melee attack, just not with the plus one from Masterwork. Okay, wait. So add BAB and strength mod? Oh, that's yep. where... I, I just got that. Great, 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 great. 12 plus 9 is 21. 21 punch? <laughs> 21 will hit. Yes! How... Okay. I don't know how to do damage with a regular punch wait for it it's 1d3 plus strength mod um roll 1d3 plus 4 mm, i'll take a six um free action leave him alone you will call it a day i am eternally amused by the fact that clarence did roll a nat one on his init so 
Mm. He's also, he's not going to get a surprise round because he doesn't have that sort of synergy. He's got like a plus ability. 18 from all his samurai levels and his high, high decks. Uh, Vargas, with his long arm, is going to swing at bird food. I'm assuming he's going to get a little bit of cover because I think Kira's sort of in between the two of us. Yeah. It is a 17 on the die, so that is going to be a 23. <laughs> 23 will hit. Four, six, seven. So that is seven points of damage. And thanks to the six non-lethal, he is unconscious. Wow. He's not dying. He's just unconscious. Also, I just called him Bird Food, but he's not Bird Food. He's the other guy. Yeah. We didn't get his name, did we? We just knocked him out. That's officially other guy. The problem is they all have the same mouth, so I'm just looking at the token real quick <laughs> and forgetting where everybody is. All right. Well, now we are entering into round one. And in round one, the first person to act is a bird and it's the bluebird and that bluebird is going to yeah it's it's gonna charge at kira it's just got a straight line of attack it takes off into the air it screeches and it charges that is a 12 it's not gonna do it well that's just sad she's you know she is friendly toward the bird hi i'm kira mean it knows that you're mean so nice. <laughs> and now Asher is up. Asher is going to draw his gun as a move action. And he's not going to shoot at bird food yet. He's going to give him another. He's going to give him one chance. He's going to say, perhaps we're not as dumb as we look. Surrender yourself and we can spare your life. And I'll roll a diplomacy as my standard action. Natural 19 Wow. Plus 10 for a 29. And um, Bird Foods, he's standing there. He's got a, a long bow propped up against the throne that he just got out of. And he's he looks like he's thinking about what you just said. Anything else you want to do or you already did your move action? And you get the gun out? Yep, that's it. All right. Um, Brixby is up. Uh, well, um, mixed experience here because like... Obviously, Brixby sees Asher attempting diplomacy, but one of the birds already attacked Kira. So, unfortunately for Brixby, it's already on. It's going to take a five-foot step to the north, and then a diagonal step to the northeast for 15 foot of total movement, giving him line of sight to bird food. He is going to uh, position his hands in a, in a mimicry of how Asher aims his gun and shoot off a scorching ray at bird food. Are you casting defensively? Ooh, you're right, because the bird can hit me. I should cast defensively. So let me cast defensively. You don't have to. No, you know, I forgot about the bird in general, and I, I truly should. So let me, uh, I need a 19 for this to work, and I have a plus 8 to the roll. All right, I roll a perfect 20 for a 28 to cast defensively. Nice that you wasted that. I roll a 17 uh, for a 23 versus touch AC. A 23 will hit. Ooh, not great in terms of... Uh, oh, but I guess I still do have... Is he still technically flat-footed because he hasn't acted, correct? Right. Oh, yeah. So let me just um, tack on to that awful, for the listeners at home, two twos and two ones for a total of a six on 46. Plus a sneak attack of nine, bringing that to 50. That's my turn. Wow. All right. So that's a pretty good chunk. It's impressive that the yeah that the two d six came in fifty percent <laughs> higher than the four d six. I know, a five and a four on my sneak attack for the folks at home. But yeah, that was a, a sad scorching ray. So um, for whatever was going to happen off of that brilliant diplomacy check from Asher, that uh, looks like it's not to be. Bird food is going to grab his composite longbow on his way back, run around behind his throne, cast some kind of a spell with some hand motions and magical doohickory, and then he's going to shout, um, We're on to attack! And as we've said, these are rickety makeshift walls. So, do with that what you will. 
and his turn is over. Um, let's see. I am definitely not secretly doing anything. Do do do. Definitely not secretly doing anything. Still not see. Was he buffed already with haste or something that would let him do two moves in a standard? It's kind of a flavor grabbing his bow off the ground because, you know, it's his weapon. He's drawing a weapon huh. as part of He was wielded. He sure. was, it was on. He was already wielding it. Yeah. Just sitting on know. the throne holding the bow like you do. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll make sure next time one of us needs a flavor, draw a weapon. We're making up for the fact that technically he was supposed to go before Brixby. So, because I forgot that his initial bone was higher than Brixby's. And I didn't realize until I was accepted the sneak attack damage. So, oh. don't you worry yourself. Allow it. All right. We'll, we'll keep the nine damage. She can have a spell. Yep. It's fine. And the green bird. What does the blind bird have to do? Uh, the blind bird at the end of their turn has to roll a will save and get above a 16. Okay, so the blind bird is going to screech angrily and just sort of chill around its master, and it'll roll that will save. And yeah, 16 on the die, so blind bird, no longer blind. And that takes us to Kira. Uh, All right, then she will draw Lucy and just go for your your basic standard smash. Um, it's a non-natural 20. A non-natural 20 will hit. Yay. Um, that is going to be nine points of damage. Ow. Eh. Ow, says bird food. Ow. He shouldn't hit me with a hammer. Please don't make your birds attack my friends. Thank you. Which brings us to the final bird. And since Brixby was kind enough to position himself next to two birds... He's going to get a full attack. He's going to get the wrath. The wrath of the hawk. First for the bite. That is a six. Close. Talon. Talon number 113. Ugh, still no. And a nine for Talon number two. Hmm. Uh, an assault, to be sure, but somehow Brixby made it out unscathed. Messed up. <laughs> he added all those <laughs> together, though. Barely. Out of it. All right, uh, that brings us to Vargas. Okay, Vargas is just going to stay right where he is, and he is going to spell strike, spell combat with Arcane Mark, and smack this bluebird twice in the face. First attack for the Arcane Mark. That is an 18 on the die for a melee touch attack with a plus 5. So that is a 23. Oh yeah, that'll hit. 5 on the die for that for 8 damage. Alright, it's still up. Swing again for his regular attack. That is a 12 on the die plus a take the minus 2 for that. That's only plus a 4. So that is 16. Uh, 16 will hit. Okay. And that is only a 2 on the die for 5 more damage. It looks awful. It just looks so, so bad. Man, these are strong birds. You're punching a tiny bird, but it is still up. It's taking more damage than this dude over yeah, here. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> Weirdly, yes, it did have more HP than that guy. <laughs> that poor uh, guy. That is his turn. All right, um, so that brings us to Clarence. And Clarence is standing in front of this bird. He gonna punch it. Yay, go Clarence. Clarence. Uh, Clarence rolls a natural 18. Oh my god, Clarence. Does Clarence have improved unarmed strength? He does, Clarence is brawler. <laughs> Clarence killed the nice. bird. Heck yeah. Yay, Clarence. Yeah, Clarence, you're a hero. What a good day. Very capable five, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Clarence is my new backup. <laughs> and Clarence is going to five foot step to the northeast, and he's got to punch the other bird. Good for you, Clarence. And he whiffs. Oh, but he tried. He did. That's the important thing. Blue bird doesn't have a turn anymore. We're back around to Asher. Asher sighs because he had certainly hoped not to do this, but bricks in a bricks. 
So he has enough movement speed to move northeast into the room to be adjacent to Kira, giving him a pretty clean shot, minus, you know, the green bird on bird food. And he is going to, well, albeit somewhat reluctantly, pull the trigger. And the reluctance shows with the misfire. Ooh, that's big. Things were going very well. So, yeah. Uh, that's cool, though. Uh, NBD. That's his whole All turn, right, though. That'll bring us to Brixby once more. Uh, Brixby. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. I think Brixby kind of expected to guard the door soon because he figured the bird food thing would sort of get handled. But he's going to move five feet to the south and ten feet to the east and uh, grabbing his uh, arcane bonded amulet, recall his uh, scorching ray and let off another scorching ray at bird food, probably with a little bit of cover behind that thing. And that is a 17 on the die again for a 23 versus touch. Wow. Yeah, 23 will do it. See if we can do better on these D6s this time. No sneak. Eh, 13 in total. Pretty good. Pretty good roll. Bird food is looking hurt, which brings us to the bird food. And he's going to take a step back. Just a little five foot step. And he's going to say, it didn't have to be like this. It didn't have to be like this. And now you're all going to die. And he's going to raise that bow. And he's going to draw weird looking arrow from his uh, quiver almost looks magical he's gonna fire three times because he is an archer uh we're gonna do the first one at kira we're not gonna declare all of them first because she might go down and the first one is it's like a 36 to hit no. that is so high I did cast shield, so... Oh, we're good. Never mind. It's fine. Let me just get a couple more d6s. Oh, can you not, though? Um, it's Tuesday. I just I just needed a couple more. Okay. Um, so... Oh, I should have been raging. So the regular weapon damage... <sighs> Boxcars. The regular weapon damage oh, oh. is going to be 19, and then um, 4 bane damage as he shoots you with a human bane arrow. And as a half-orc, you count as human and orc. Okay, so 19 plus 4. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, he's going to shoot you again. Because he's got rapid that's shot. Why? That's so mean. He's got a rapid oh, shot. Oh, that's really bad. He's... That's He's that's spicy. It is mean. That's, okay, this is fine. This is fine. We prepared oh, for this. That's a much worse roll. So it's sixteen. <sighs> okay, no, sixteen is fine or good or I'm not hit by a sixteen. All right, he's gonna shoot you one more time. Great. Twenty-four. Twenty-four will hit, uh, which will be fine as long as you don't do thirty points of damage. Well, it's not a Bane arrow this time. It's just a regular arrow. I know, but that other regular arrow had so many points. Yeah, so... 13 points of damage. Oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, definitely down. Not dead. So, this is great. So you're uh, unconscious? Super unconscious. Cool, cool, cool. Tight, tight, tight. All right. Definitely not secretly doing anything. I feel like you're secretly doing something. Right. Mm, definitely not still. Yeah, we're around to a bird. And is this bird still alive? This bird is still alive. It's a miracle. It's going to take a five-foot fly towards Asher, the gunless wonder. And um, the bird is going to full attack Asher with its fury. Dope. Uh, that is a 16 with the bite. Miss. All right. How about a 10 with the talon? Also How miss. How about four? Ooh, that one hit. No, also a miss. All right. And that brings us to Kira. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So it's been a minute. Just guess I'm going to roll this d20 and do something with my con. 
Yeah, D20 plus your con mod. Uh, minus however many you are under zero. D20 plus con mod. Minus, uh, okay. So that's just gonna bump down one more time. Again, I have this great rage thing that I never use, and I'm gonna be so mad about it in like 30 minutes. That's my turn, right. creeping closer to death. All right, well, this uh, bird here is gonna recognize that um, it's in a little bit of a weird situation, but uh, Clarence, despite pretending to be an ally, is now an enemy. And Clarence is going to get the Wrath of the Bird. Yeah, he gets hit. Clarence oh has God. been bit. He is no. shirtless. He is canonically shirtless, and he takes a bite from a bird. You get the claw. Oh, my God, this bird is rolling rocks. All right, only one damage on the first claw. And for the trifecta, no, misses him on the third one. So Clarence took some licks, but he's still up. Clarence will never die. And we're on to Vargas. Vargas is going to... Well, he saw Kira go down. He is going to step 10 feet to the north, and he is going to lock eyes with bird food, and he's going to face out his right hand at him. He says something that sounds odd, like maybe he tried to figure out the incantation correctly himself and he fires off a large green dart out of his hand at bird food as he casts acid arrow oh, man. I know the bird is between us uh, I guess technically uh, Clarence is between us as well so he's probably going to get a good bit of cover that is a 16 on the die for a 21 against touch uh, 21 against touch. I think even with cover, yeah. Is going to be 2d4 of acid. Is that just 2d4? Mm -hmm. But it persists, which is the cool thing about it. And it's like super long range and spell resistance stuff. Oh yeah, it lasts another round to a maximum of 6 edition rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it lasts for just one more round at this level. Okay, so that is a two and a four on the die, so that is six points of acid damage. Ow! Yeah, bird food. And then does that, as the person who's used this spell more than I have, does that trigger then on his turn or my turn for the second round of it? Uh, the second round is, I think, is on your turn. Um, but if he tries to cast another spell, this will he'll have to roll a concentration because it's a persistent damage effect. Oh yeah, that's true. All right, so that will be Vargas's turn then. He fires the acid arrow spell that he learned the other day from Brixby at him. Okay, and Clarence is going to get the big wooden d20 as he tries to flurry this bird. Stupid bird. Um, natural 6 on the first one. That's not going to do it. Oh, but a natural 17 on the second one, so he punches bird. <laughs> Four damage. Clarence punches a bird. The bird is still doing okay. The bird has definitely gotten the better of the fight so far. So is he a level zero brawler or? No, he's got Flurry of Blows. He's a level two brawler. Aw, Clarence. I will take Clarence as my backup character and make that sacrifice for the group. Jeff already called him. Okay, well, Zach, I'm in a crisis right now, so I think that's all share. <laughs> oh, and I misspoke. It's not Flurry of Blows. It's actually Brawler's Flurry. So, yeah, just, it's the same exact. It's the right. same, but okay. cut all the times I said it wrong and replace it with that one sound bit. So it's like <laughs> Clarence attacks with <laughs> Brawler's Fury. I can't even. That specific sound I, effect is going yeah. in each time. That's it's happening. <laughs> replace it with that one, yes. And it's Asher's turn. Asher <laughs> is. Well, he had a different plan until Kira got shot literally three times. Well, one miss. That's fine. Twice. He is, as a standard action, going to reach down and lay on hands to, which a supernatural ability does not provoke from the bird, to heal 1d6, 5. Hey! Feel pretty good about that. Uh, and then, so Asher fixed that other gun. He spent the night doing that, but I don't know whether he would have actually had it on a holster or not. I would assume it's just in his pack, and he would have to retrieve a stored item, which is 
is another standard action that he doesn't have. Uh, but he will free action drop his jammed gun. And as a move action, he's going to draw his plus one light hammer. BB. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble now. If you thought that hammer hurt, he points to Lucy. Wait till you taste this one. <laughs> and that's the end of his turn. All right. And that brings us up to Brixby. All right. Uh, Bricks at this point will move action, uh, pull the wand off of his belt. I keep forgetting to load it into this speed sheath thing that I've had since character creation. Um, That would make a swift action, but I'm definitely going to remember to do that next time. So he takes it out, um, and then he levels it at bird food, and uh, let's fly to purple magic missiles. All right, uh, four and a one. Plus two makes that seven in total. Ouch. Yeah, bird food really looks like he's on death's door here. And um, you have one more chance to surrender. And bird food uh, says, how would I just take the lot of you with me? And he's going to fire one of those magical arrows at Clarence. Oh, no, Clarence. Yeah, I don't Clarence, know. If, no. I don't know if Clarence can survive. What? Oh, can Bricks be bodyguard? <laughs> oh my god! Ride? Yeah, please take me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone besides Clarence? Yeah, so they one back up. Starts playing, and Bricks just dives <laughs> in front of him. <laughs> so Clarence is down. He oh, is Clarence. not. He's not below con, but it's looking. It's looking bad for old Clarence. Everybody, drop everything. Our plan has changed. Clarence! <laughs> Asher stops partway through pouring the potion down Cure to go give it to Clarence instead. <laughs> For his second shot of rapid shot, um, he's going to patwang one of these magical arrows at Vargas. It looks like a pretty clear shot from here. The bird's not in the way? Uh, a little bit of cover from the bird, yes. Yeah. So does a take a... Does a 16 hit Vargas? Uh, it does not. All right. So you just wasted that magical arrow. All right. And let's see. He's just assessing the situation here. Yeah, he's going to fire his last one at Vargas. Uh, just a regular arrow this time. That is... Oh, that's a natural 19. That's going to be like a 27. So that definitely hit. All right, very low damage, just 10 damage. And bird food is done. You can definitely hear some footsteps in the hallway. Definitely some footsteps in the hallway now. As it appears, this ridiculous architecture has finally allowed the cavalry to come around. And we are on Green Bird. Green Bird is going to unleash its full fury on Asher. Five to hit. No. Um, four to hit. Nope. Uh, nine to hit. Also no. So I can't even get a natural 20 just like from a bird. If you combined all three of those and doubled it, then it would hit. Wow. That's something. Talking trash. Uh, Kira is up. You are prone. Okay, well, Rage, one. I'm going to lean right into that and never not do that again because that was dumb. Uh, So just a quiet Rage from the floor. I'm going to stand. Move action. Can I stand and also take out a bow? Um, Yeah, you can draw a weapon as part of a move action, but standing does provoke from the bird. From the bird. Um, I think I'm okay with that. God, if this bird gets a natural 20, I'm going to be so mad. Seven against your prone AC. Great. So you're up. You got a bow. I'll just hold the bow and set set Lucy <laughs> just down on the floor or drop it. I guess uh, she will also um, just give Asher a very weak high five. Thanks. You're welcome. And um, the red bird is gonna take a five foot flutter on over to Brixby and absolutely murder him. This red bird is seven for the bite. Uh, Fourteen for claw number one. All right. And uh, eight. Also a mess. 
All right, and that takes us up to Vargas. And does the acid damage take on your turn? Yes. So that will be... Ooh, that is a four on one of those, and it set us seven more points of acid. And it is done now because it only gets one extra turn for three levels. Oh, and I guess so is he. Yeah, the acid just burning his scarred face. And he looked like he was about out on his feet. And it's just, you know, he's got so little skin left on that face. Maybe the acid got into his brain. He falls to the ground. Well, that's awesome because now I don't have to waste either of my two touch spells on him when it sounds like there's more people coming in. Mm -hmm. So Vargas is going to take a five foot step diagonally to the north. Whoops, I'm on the wrong tool. There we go. And he is going to unleash his full attack action using uh, Arcane Mark to take two swings at this bird. That is a 19 to hit. A 19 will hit the bird. That is five points of damage. Uh, 22 to hit. (laughs) 22 will hit? Yeah. And that is six points of damage. Down goes the red bird. Oh, and wow, uh, it was just pointed out to me that it might have been a good idea to close that door before I moved. Uh, so I'm just going to hope that they're all coming from the other door and that I didn't just do this. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, on initiative nine, somebody comes closer. On initiative five, somebody gets super close. And on initiative three, Clarence is going to make a death save. Come on, Clarence. Come on, buddy. Uh, that's a success. Clarence hey. is stable. Oh, yeah. Good Go job, first. Clarence. All right. And on initiative 22, somebody gets closer. I don't know if you remember, but you walked by a lot of people. Yeah, we remember. And um, we were really nice to them. Yeah, it's Asher's turn. Yeah, Asher is going to drop the light hammer. Because boy, did bird food luck out with an acid death. Uh, he will then, <laughs> as his standard, retrieve the newly repaired gun that he took off the last smilers they faced and uh, load it. That's his whole turn. Brixby. All right. Uh, Brixby is going to take a step to the west. Um, and uh, standing on the corpse of the bluebird right at the feet of the recently uh, stabilized Clarence. Glad to see you still with us. Reaching into a spell component pouch, he's going to clutch some primary powders in his hand, um, readying to uh, color spray if two or more combatants come through this door uh, within the area of effect. Actually, sorry, if two or more combatants Come within the area of effect. He's going to cast color spray. Okay. Bird food does not get a turn any longer. And a smiler comes running. And yeah, he's going to just come into the door and sort of stand on the inside of the doorway. He can't attack anybody in a single move. So he's out there. And then we're going to go to... An orc who is going to come running in. And does Brixby's ready to action go off? It does. It's will save time, buddy. Yay. The smiler fails. And the orc also fails. Awesome. What's their HD? Uh, We've got one for the orc and two for the smiler. (laughs) They are in trouble. Yay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's do this. So this is the this is the unconscious blinded stun or blinded and stunned. So six rounds of that, and then just and then four more rounds of being uh, just blinded and stunned, not unconscious, and then an additional round of being stunned. So in total, eleven rounds of stun, ten rounds of blindness, six rounds of unconsciousness. Um, that's the best. That's it. <laughs> and that's Brix's turn. Or, I guess, ready to action. Never leave home without a color spray. And uh, we got another orc who's going to come running. He'll stop there. And we got Green Bird. Green Bird is feeling lonely. Well. But Green Bird really, really hates Asher. They could have AOO'd me, though, for 
retrieving my item and for reloading. So I thought maybe we, we were cool now. Oh, it's just not a very smart bird. And they, <laughs> they say it's a bird. <laughs> it's a 13 as it Miss. blindly flails at Asher. Um, a four. And uh, a 21. Yummy. Yeah, and that's going to be 74 damage. Okay. That so was a joke. It's Keen yeah. Vorpal bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, four damage from the talon. Nice. And so the bird was actually bird food, and <laughs> he's a druid that was been wild shipped. Probably. And Kira. So, um, more standing, I think, in this round. Um, move action to put away a weapon. Move action to pick one up off the floor. Yep. Great. You could drop the bow as a free action. Um, yeah, actually, that's probably a better idea because I don't think I'm going to use it until I'm immediately threatened. So, free action drop. Um, pick up the guy again. That was my move. I'm going to take a five foot step back from this bird. Let me not be in Asher's way in case he needs to shoot something. If I just jut up against the throne here, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. And I'm going to shoot a bird. Say, Coward! Yeah. But a, a birdier voice. Right, sure, sure, sure. Caw-caw, coward! <laughs> and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna try to hit that bird. Nice. You couldn't hit the broad side of a ostrich. Oh, yeah, do you wanna be saying <laughs> that when I haven't actually right gone there. yet? Oh. <laughs> that's brave. Um You suck! So that's a twenty four to hit. Yeah, that hits. And still raging, so I'm going to roll my 1d12. Ugh, not great. Okay, that's uh, that's 12 points of damage. I hope it. I kind of hope it kills this bird. I'm so sorry. It didn't. Bird. You didn't kill the bird. You only made it stronger. Classic bird. Well, that's me. All right. Um, Vargas is up. He's gonna five foot step. Seeing how easily these guys went down from. Color spray, he's going to assume they're not worth using his good spells on. So he is just going to do Arcane Mark again to get his two attacks off. So first one is an 11 on the die. So that is a 16 against regular AC. Yeah, with the cover, uh, that's not going to hit. Okay, so second swing then... That is one less. That is a 10 on the die, so I'm assuming that also definitely doesn't hit. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Okay, that is his turn then. All right. Red Orc is going to come rushing in, and that will provoke an attack of opportunity from Vargas as he passes through a threatened square. Uh, That is an 18 on the die, so that is a 24. Yeah, that will hit. That is six points of damage. Yeah, he looks like he is about to get ferocious on you he takes a swing with his bent piece of metal these guys might be a little bit familiar from book one that is a 13 13 is a miss all right and he bleeds a little bit on your shoe clarence doesn't get a turn and let's see green is going to come rushing in do you have combat reflexes i unfortunately do not all right, well, he's going to come rushing into the room with a double move and can't actually attack anyone. Which brings us to the green smiler, who's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, he can't really wind up in a spot where he can hit anybody because it's all too crowded. And that takes us to Asher. Asher is going to look to Kira and say, I can handle the bird. They need your help. He will take a five foot step back and shoot a bird. The PG-13 show, you can't shoot the bird. Uh, I really don't think I did shoot the bird with a natural two. Although maybe it has a low touch. Does an 11 hit touch? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Still getting used to this gun. It's not my normal weapon, he says apologetically. And will then, uh, as a swift action, lay on hands himself to undo the damage the bird caused last turn. Maximum of six. Yay. Nice. Another orc comes running around the corner to add to the pile up of bodies. And then Brixby is up. Brixby is going to take 
a five foot step onto Clarence. Uh, and he's just going to level the, the magic missile wand and fire at the green smiler that just came into the room two violet arcane shards of energy uh one and a two there for a five total <laughs> well there. damage is damage take on the wand and that's gonna be uh Brixby's turn all right the blue smiler doesn't get a turn because he's unconscious purple orc same thing and uh, pink orc just got punched by vargas yeah, he's going to come in. He's going to get all the way around to a flank of Vargas because Vargas already used his attack of opportunity. And he totally wastes it with an 11. <sighs> well, Green Bird is going to go after Asher because canonically birds hate Asher. Four, 18, and 7. Miss, miss, miss. She takes us to Kira. <laughs> Kira starts to give Asher a nod, like, okay, and then sees him miss the bird, and then the bird attack him. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll be right over here. Um, be careful. And we'll move up to this little guy, south, left, and um, into this, I don't know, it's almost opposing square from across the green orc, their looser and hammer, um, still raging, I think, because she's had a recent near-death experience we're gonna we're just gonna try we're gonna try out a power attack we're gonna see how it goes we're gonna see how it goes see how it goes because hey, why not we're already raging oh that's not great okay six on the die plus eight 14 to hit uh it's not gonna do it yeah this is why we don't do a power attack this is why, exactly why um okay that's my turn all right vargas you are in a little bit of a crowd. Okay, Vargas goes goes enough of this, and I'm going to roll to cast defensively. Uh, <laughs> that is a three on the die, so he is not able to cast defensively to cast his arcane mark, and it's cantrip, so it doesn't matter that I lose it. So he still gets his regular attack anyway, though. So, but that means I only get one attack this turn. So I'm going to attack Red Orc because I've actually hit him. Uh, that is a 13 on the die for a 19. That'll hit. Uh, that is seven points of damage. All right. He looks like he's well past unconscious and dying, but he's still standing because he's ferocious like that. And that is his turn. All right. Orange is going to... He's taking a look at how things are going in here. And he's going to back up and take off running. Oh, no. So Orange has left the building. Now Red is going to go after Vargas because he's got that flank. That sweet, sweet flank. That is an 18 on the die for a 24. That is a hit. Ah, uh, that is going to be 10 damage with his improvised bashy machine. All right. And no turn for Clarence. And Green is going to step on up to Kira and take a swing with his improvised bashy thingy. Uh, five on the die is not going to do anything. Let's see. Green Smiler. Green Smiler likes the idea of having Vargas pinned down here. He's going to take a swing with a long sword after a five foot step. Actually, he's going to spend his move action staring at Vargas as if he's studying him. Yeah, it's a 21. Uh, 21 is a hit. All right. With his study target bonus, that is a total of 11 damage. All right. Uh, Vargas is into the single digits. But um, Asher is up. Asher... Uh, seeing the Smiler take a big ol' juicy hit out of Vargas, who's getting hemmed in there, uh, he is going to take a five-foot step up and reload as he moves, all black powder vaultery, which will provoke from his sworn nemesis, the green bird. Uh, it's a four. Cool, cool. Uh, and that misses... 
dodging this claw unthinkably, he will try get in the, to get the hang of this new pistol and shoot just within his roving range of Green Smiler. Oh yeah, that's a 21 against touch. <laughs> that will hit Green Smiler. I get to use a D8 today. <laughs> and it's minimum, as it as it always is, uh, but it's two points of bludgeoning and piercing damage. All right, a little bit of damage on that Green Smiler. All right, let's see now. Blue Orc, the last one out of the room, is going to come rushing in. And he's going to run all the way across the room towards Kira, which will provoke from Vargas and Kira. Dirty 20? Yeah, that'll hit. Give me more than three, thank you. Five, nine, 14 points of damage. He's in the negatives. He's still up. All right, then Vargas will take his. That is a 15 on the die, 21. That'll hit. Six points of damage. Dead. Yes. So satisfying. <laughs> Blue never had a chance. Never even got to get an attack off. And that takes us to Brixby. Brixby is about to do something incredibly dumb because he cares deeply about his friend. Brixby, looking over at Vargas, seeing him hemmed in, is going to drop his magic missile wand while moving first to the southwest and then to the west, provoking not one, not two, but three attacks of opportunity. To move into Vargas' square, he's also drawing his rapier. Before I resolve my attack, please resolve three attacks of opportunity against me. All right, we will start with the Smiler. Uh, that is a 19 on the die, which is a critical threat with a longsword. That will hit. I assume. Nat- Natural one on the confirm, so. But it's still 12 damage. I'll take it. This game is so stressful. I'm poking the bear here. Um, let's see. Pink Orc is gonna swing for a uh, 12. That'll miss. And Red Orc swings uh, 19. That'll also miss. 19 misses. AC 23, man. Remember, mage armor and uh, shield before we walk <sighs> into this room. Brix is tanking right now. <laughs> Show off a move. Yep. And accordingly, with that rapier in uh, his friend's square, he's going to turn to the green smiler that has dealt so much damage. And he himself is going to attempt to return the favor in kind. No! <laughs> Forgot to even put in the, uh, the, the flanking there, but I rolled the three, guys. So that's going to be an 11. So heroic, uh, total, though, before then. So good. You know, after getting whacked, uh, I think it disoriented him a little bit. Blood in his eyes. He missed with the return swing. But he's ready for a full attack now. It was 100% nice. worth it. It was. All right. Well, that takes us to our two unconscious friends who don't get to do anything. And then Pink is going to keep on attacking Vargas because he doesn't know what's going on with this rat guy. 18 on the die for a 24. That is a hit. That's nine damage. Uh, Vargas is unconscious and he auto stabilizes. All right. And that brings us to the green bird who will not leave Asher alone. We have a 15. We have a 14. I hate this stupid bird. Hate it. And an 11. (laughs) Three misses. Kira is up. Five foot step back um, away from the party where she really wants to be. But this is fine. To hit this orc guy again, please make this worthwhile. Okay, 14 on the die, plus 10, 24 to hit. Uh, Yeah, 24 definitely hits. Four, four plus nine, 13 points of damage to uh, green orc in front of me. Looking ferocious as well. Um, that, yeah, that's my turn. All right, Vargas, unconscious, not dying. Yep, he is uh, just going to stay unconscious because I'm worried if I use my once a day ability to get up and hit somebody, the rest of them are just going to pile on and kill me. <laughs> so he is just going to stay unconscious. All right, uh, Red Orc is going to take a swing at Brixby. Oh, God, Brixby. 19. That's a miss. That'll miss. And he bleeds a little bit more. Hmm. No turn for Clarence. No tea time for Francis. And this 
green orc is gonna step towards Kira once more, and that is 18. Uh, not gonna do it. No? But your AC is supposed to be terrible. I know, but now I have a shield, well, shield spell. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah, he bleeds a little more as well. Um, this Smiler is going to, let's see. Yeah, he's going to study Brixby, give him the old college stabaroo. That's a 25 to hit. That will hit. This is nothing like college. I don't remember getting <laughs> stabbed by a sword in college. Only five damage, minimum damage. That is fine. Brix is cool. And um, Asher is up. Asher will take a five-foot step to the west uh, and will reload safely out of reach of this bird and will shoot again at the green smiler. The 23 against touch. <laughs> yep. Ooh, double what I had last time. Four points of damage. Boop, 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 boop. He's bloodied. We got a bloody smile here. And Brixby, the melee monster. I <laughs> know. Brixby, the melee monster, is uh, going to step out of flank, taking a five-foot step to the east, still in front of the Smiler. And despite not flanking, so this is going to be real, real lame, I'm going to unleash a full attack for old time's sake for Brixby, the melee monster, with the rapier coming in with a 15 with a 9 on the die. That's a miss. Alrighty, and the tail blade. All right, and that's a 10, unfortunately. So uh, whiffs and whiffs, and I will remain where I'm at. All right, and two unconscious turns tick by, and Pink is going to step up to get the flank on you. He loves those flanks. Love it. Oh, that's a, is that a, yeah, that's a natural 20. It's going to roll to confirm. 16, 20. 22 to confirm. I don't think that confirms. Does not confirm. All right, that's good for you. 13 damage, though. That was a big one. All right, still up. Wow. How is that possible? I'm a 14 con rat. <laughs> I got 32 hit points. You probably have three less than I do. The bird's going to do its bird thing. And uh, that's a natural 19, 21 to hit Asher with the bite. Yeah, that hits. Nice. Finally. Uh, four damage. Follow up with the claw. That's twelve, and the other claw is a nine. No. <laughs> and now Kira is up again. Um, I don't want to leave Asher with this bird or this orc, but I also don't want to leave. The- <laughs> mostly joking about the bird. Bird will be fine. I mostly don't want to leave uh, Bricks and Vargas either. So I think I'm going to also just provoke in a much less heroic light because it's already been done now and step around this guy. I'll take that, and um, I guess you yeah, also provoke from Smiler Man. Um, that no, that doesn't provoke from Smiler Man, but it is a sixteen from the Orc. Uh, no. Okay. Although actually, I'm realizing I need to take a step back to be able to continue attacking the Orc. So, does that provoke? That would provoke from the Smiler. Seventeen on a die for a twenty-one. No. Sorry. No. Still got a shield. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> um, let's see, let's uh, 19 to hit the orc. Oh, uh, yeah, 19 will hit. Oh, it's like, what, 7? 10, 10 points of damage. That's the end of that orc. And uh, Vargas popping up. Nope, Vargas is unconscious on the ground. All right, red orc is going to take a swing at Kira. 18, so we know that will miss. Some blood splashes from his 5,000 wounds, and he looks like he's going to just absolutely die without anybody doing anything. And Green doesn't get a turn anymore, which takes us to Green Smiler, who is now surrounded. But he's he's got the flank on Bricks, so he's going to go after Bricks. Uh, that's only a 12 to hit. That's no good. That'll miss. Asher is up. And Asher is... Now that the green orc is dead, going to take a five foot step to the west, closer still to the milieu of the melee. Reload and shoot at the green smiler again. And now this pistol has misfired. Oh no. Orange creamsicle, how could you? I trusted you. Well, looks like I didn't 
fully fix this pistol after all. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's not my finest hour, but it is the end of this turn. All right, Brixby's up. Since it, it would be completely useless for Brix at 2 HP to try to continue to stand and bang against three enemies basically on his own. He's going to take a full withdraw uh, for his first move to the east and then continue to move diagonally and over and just kind of slump on the throne for a second there, I guess. Take a quick break. Yeah, he's pretty messed up right now. Just take a breather, and we're going to take another turn on the old unconscious counters. And let's see now. Pink, yeah, he's going to follow Brixby. Ugh, that's so mean. Well, there's a lot of his buddies between him and you. You can't justify that. He's going to totally whiff on Brixby, though. Uh, the bird <laughs> follows Asher because all the bird ever does is follow Asher. We've got a 5, a 12. <laughs> just keep the bird. And a 13. Oh. Miss, the miss, bird's miss. just there for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. just... Anyone who has read the Dark Tower series understands the complicated and nuanced relationship between a gunslinger and a hawk. <laughs> mm-hmm. David? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kira is up. You've got a reach weapon and like 30 enemies five feet away from you. You're basically doomed. You should probably surrender. Um, let's see. Purple and blue are still down, right? Yeah. Um, Vargas is down. Let me, I guess I'll just shimmy backwards then. I'm just going to take this one step back here, stand on top of green, and provoke again from Green Smiler. Green Smiler misses. Great. Oh, well. Okay, so do I. That's a one. <laughs> Uh, Vargas, anything from you? You know what? Why the heck not? Vargas is going to activate Broken Not Beaten. <laughs> uh, wake up for half a second, and as a standard action, he is going to cast Shocking Grasp on uh, Brainy McGee. First, that is the concentration check, 19 on the die. And then the actual attack, 14 on the die. So that is a 20 to hit. <laughs> that will hit. Uh, or a 22 <clears throat> if he's wearing metal armor or using a metal weapon. Uh, he does have a metal weapon. Yay. So 22 to hit regular AC. All right, that hits. That's going to be 4d6. Uh, 12 damage. Dead. Okay, and then uh, Vargas takes one more point of damage and collapses again. <laughs> Always fun. And Red is um, very confused by that. And he's going to, after staring at, at Vargas's body for a minute, waiting for him to pop up again, he's going to um, approach Kira, which will provoke as he steps in. Uh, 19. 19 hits. Great. Hang on, actually, because I'm now far away from Vargas again. What have I done? Ooh, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, 17. 17 still hits. Great. Which we'll say briefly, I guess. Um, Kira starts to attack and then sees Vargas go down again and is visibly distracted as she just kind of swings out. It's just enough to clip them, maybe, hopefully. Clip for a solid 14 points of damage. A solid 14 point clip. Yeah, he's dead. Um, This is the one that had been bleeding for five rounds. So, yeah, he's dead. Sorry. Still no turn for Clarence, no turn for the Green Smiler, and Asher is up. Asher is going to uh, take a five-foot step back adjacent to Kira and say, Well, if I lose it, I've got a few more. And pull the trigger while he's going to reload and then pull the trigger on this already broken firearm. Which, if it misfires again, will explode. (laughs) <laughs> so actually, he'll take a five-foot step to the southeast so that if it explodes, it doesn't... He's not right next to Kira. Yeah, he did that. He definitely did that. <laughs> yeah. I barely healed you, and now I'm going to explode next to you. All right, so here we go. Does not explode. Uh, does take... So a, the broken condition on a weapon, is it minus two or minus four? I should know this. I think it's a minus four. I thought so. Uh, so that makes it only an 11 against touch with the broken condition. Uh, touch 12. Nice. Well, he tried. End of turn. 
All right, Brixby is up. All right, um, so Brixby is going to reach into his pouch, bloodied, uh, backed against the throne, this orc in front of him who's just whipping this piece of garbage. He's going to reach, grab some gum Arabic, push this piece of hair into it, and attempt to cast defensively. 18 on the die. Brixby is in now invisible per the invisibility spell. With that, he is going to move... 15 feet to the west and that will be my turn all right it looks like the broken condition is only a minus two so that actually was a hit on the fanatic if you want to roll damage okay and i will take a minus two on the damage as well for it being broken so it it's it's probably not a ton anyway um man would have been almost max uh instead it's still six ah, six is pretty good thank you jim and Pink is, since his target just disappeared on him, he's going to take a step down and go after Kira. Uh, natural one. So that's a hit. You can see it. And then the bird <laughs> is going to do its bird thing. Uh, 13, um, 11, and 9. Kira is up. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's fly footstep here, up west. And swing out at pink again. Woohoo! 18 on the die. So like a 20. Uh, it's, it's high. It's up there. 28. Yeah, that'll hit. Cool. Uh, 19. 19 points of damage to green. Green? Pink. Sorry, pink. Pink. That was the sound of pink's head bursting like a melon. Gallagher style. <laughs> That's my turn. All right. We're running out of enemies here. Uh, Vargas, can you come back from the dead again? Nope, that is a one today ability. All right, Clarence uses his uh, ability to lay there looking just so peaceful. And um, Asher is up. And at this point, uh, we are down to um, two unconscious enemies. And the bird that will never, ever die and this episode is about four and a half hours long, so I think <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night, Sam. Oh, night, Sam. We gotta get the night, bird, Sam. Sam. <laughs> Sam, the bird. How can you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Whew. All right. Oh, my God. Oof. That was oh, tense. Tense. Pot Against the Machine is property of its creators, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are properties of Paizo Publishing. Please visit them at paizo.com for more information. Theme Against the Machine, written and performed by our own Zach. Please consult the show notes for additional music and sound effect licensing information. Love it. That was a weird rate of counting. It threw me off. It was, it was a bit like a downhill train <laughs> carrying 30,000 pounds of bananas. Yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. <laughs>